Hi, I'm Bill Hunter. Welcome to the Satellite City R&D Building Room, where my father, Bob, and I invite you to join us for an evening of very fast building. We'll be sharing some building tips and demonstrating some of the amazing ways Hot Stuff and Super Tea can be used in your building room. First, though, I'd like to give you some background on Satellite City and how the whole thing got started. We developed Hot Stuff in 1970 because of our personal need for a glue that would give us the ability to build faster, stronger, and lighter than ever before. The obvious advantages of such a glue, our need was acute because we were constantly competing in contests around the nation. During the early 70s, we had a competition free flight group called Team Satellite. The team was composed of a mix of junior, senior, and adult members. Team Satellite traveled the contest circuit competing in major contests, both regional and national. And by 1975, we're proud to say, the team had acquired almost 90% of the available AMA records in the events flown. A major reason for the team's success was hot stuff. Every model from the smallest 020 old timer to the large Class D 65 powered 8 foot monsters were built completely with hot stuff. This is an example of 1300 satellite, 1300 square inches, a 8 foot wing. It's a typical model that we flew during those years in free flight competition. The traveling and the constant competition and occasional crashes naturally took its toll on the team's models. But with hot stuff, the team could build so fast that replacements were no problem. On the field, foul weather and hazardous conditions never stopped us. After all, if a model was damaged, we could hot stuff it back together in minutes and stay in the competition. Even though hot stuff was our big edge, we never kept it a secret. Our team members were always helping to repair the competition's damaged models and explaining how hot stuff could save loads of building time. The word spread rapidly, and soon modelers all over the U.S. were writing and calling for hot stuff. In 1973, we released hot stuff to the general hobby market through the distributor chain, and a subsequent article by Don Dewey in his RC Modeler from the Shop editorial created a nearly overwhelming worldwide response. Since that time, modelers from every facet of our sport have come to use Hot Stuff and Super T as their only glue for entire construction. We're very pleased that any experience we've gained has been put to, to use to help our modeling friends, and we hope that you'll pick up one of our free tip booklets where you see this display at your favorite hobby shop. And now for a building session with Hot Stuff and Super T, the fastest, strongest, lightest modeling glues ever used. We're working on a uh, Lazy Ace kit designed by Chuck Cunningham, and the kit is produced by Gene Wallach, who selects and cuts all of the balsa. Gene is a genius in balsa. That's uh, PNW model supply. This is a nice biplane, sport biplane. We're using a uh, method that some modelers may have used and some modelers may be surprised at to uh, hold our materials on the plan. We're using 3M77 contact spray, sprayed on the back of the plans first, then on the face of the plans, and then we put wax paper down, then we spray the wax paper with 3M77, all lightly. And as you'll note, the parts are just put down with no pins, fit perfectly in place. We're going to be doing a demonstration a little bit later. So over in the left-hand side, I'm uh, putting an outline of Super T on a piece of quarter-inch five-ply, then X in the middle and a couple of dots. And I'll be bonding a similar piece to it, about a three-inch overlap or so. Now that Super T will spread when he puts the other piece of plywood on it, but it just sits there and waits for you. 
no, no using finger pressure. Yeah, just a little pressure, a few seconds, and then, uh, then it's bonded. That bond will grow in strength over 24 hours to 5,000 pounds a square inch maximum. I've got a piece of 3 8 by 3 quarters maple motor mount stock. Um, typical motor mount stock that you might use in a 60 powered pattern chip or a, an RC trainer. Strong stuff, this maple. And very hard wood. Again, just like finger pressure. I'm assembling the parts into the uh, fin first, and they stay in place as I put them in place because of the 3M77. And now I'm going to uh, use regular hot stuff and put it on each joint. And it wicks down through that half inch stock. Very thick rudder on this ship, but it's, uh, I'd rather have a thick one than a thin one. It goes all the way through immediately. Now by using this method with the 3M77 in the wax paper instead of pins, you'll never have a problem with your uh, structure sticking to the bench or plans, for instance, because the 3M or because the uh, wax paper is without holes. You don't have to fool around with a tack hammer. We haven't used a pin in 10 years. In fact, if I wanted one, I'd have to ask my wife where they are. I'm going to separate, uh, or sand, I'm going to sand the top of that uh, rudder first, or the pin. And I'm using uh, 3M silicone carbide paper. Uh, this is uh, different than the old garnet paper that the modelers used to use in that it's an open coat and it cuts uh, so cleanly it leaves no residue in your balsa or notches or nicks. It doesn't tend to fill up and uh, it just works great with hot stuff. You can identify it easily because it's uh, gray in color and uh, it has the 3M union, uh, 3M uh, silicone carbide printed right on the back. And now I'm separating the uh, fin from the plans with a steel rule, a very thin one, uh, and I slip it under the wax paper, between the wax paper and the plan. Now the wax paper comes off cleanly with no residue. I could monocoat uh, right over that surface now and it would take very well. No problem. And I can sand immediately on the other side. That's about the fastest rudder that you've ever seen built. Unless you're already using hot stuff and then you know what I mean. Now when I'm sanding that, I'm filling any little gaps that I may have on the other side with balsa dust. And if I check it over and find any little uh, spots that I may have missed, I just put another drop on it and it uh, takes right on that balsa dust and fills the gap totally. Hot stuff is as thin as water and it penetrates immediately, where Super T is a gap filling material in itself. So it could be used to build this rudder also. Now we're going to try to answer an age-old question whether uh, something as fast as hot stuff and super tea can really be used for complete model construction. Is it strong? Well, we're going to find out. Of course, well, those of you who already build with hot stuff know uh, the answer to the question and the outcome of this demonstration. But for those of you who have never built with hot stuff or only or who only use it in limited ways, you may be surprised. This is the uh, quarter inch five ply aircraft plywood I'm securing into the vise. <clears throat> and you'll notice that when the camera comes up on the plywood, that the bond is away from the camera. I'm going to make it tough on this bond. 
Now here we go. Now let's take a look at those pieces. Now the other side is totally ripped away and ripped plywood from the other piece of plywood. It totally destroyed the plywood bond. But plywood isn't all that strong, is it? Let's try something a little tougher. A 3 8 by 3 quarter maple motor mount stock should, uh, should give us a good test. Now you remember these pieces were put together with just finger pressure and only a few moments ago. Well, let's take a look and see what happened. The maple motor mount stock has split apart. The bond is intact. Hot stuff wins again and as usual. Ripped the maple motor mount stock from end to end. Didn't take one part of the bond. And we've heard people say that hot stuff leaves something to be desired in the area of shear strength. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see about that. We'll secure this in the vise nice and tight. I've even read where some manufacturers say you have to use seven kinds of adhesive on a model. I wonder if it'll shear. Well, you missed! I'm going to hit my knee if I don't watch out. Oh. Come on. Whack it. That's oh. it. Let's drive it into the vise. One more time. Oh, oh. There we go. Now let's take a look at that. Let's see what that shear strength is like. Remember, this is this bond is three minutes old, and it's only finger pressure. Now, we uh, we don't ask you to believe us. You can try this same test yourself. Now it sheared the maple all the way from end to end, as in the previous test. That's shear strength. Now you know that your glider. Uh, dihedral, brace dihedral braces and so forth will hold together and you don't have to worry about it. You can trust hot stuff. It's as strong as you need it. This is the fuselage for the Lazy Ace. Uh, I've completed uh, one side of the fuselage using the method described earlier uh, Spraying the back of the plant lightly with 3M77, up the front of the uh, plants lightly, and then laying the wax paper down. And when I made the sides, I made two doubler, I mean two verticals and two diagonals for each part. And I put the one set above the si above the side and completed the one side as I went. You can see the complete set laying up to the right. I'm spraying a sheet of wax paper on one side, flipping it over, placing it down on the plants, on the uh, completed side. And uh, I've also cut my uh, second set of uh, laundrons uh, <coughs> to go along with this uh, next part of our uh, demonstration. And the uh, I ran out of uh, quarter by half spruce, didn't I, Bill? Right. And because I had already built one fuselage from this kit. So I just laminated together uh, two pieces of quarter square spruce for my top laundry. This is a sturdy kit. Now I've sprayed the uh, 3M77 on the other side of the wax paper and I'm ready to do my second side with no pins. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't use any pins with this method because if you do, you'll have one thick fuselage side the hot stuff will go straight through and bond the second side to the first one. You'll have a baseball bat instead of an airplane. By the way, the uh, we might mention the 3M77 is uh, available in 
a number of hobby shops. Um, it's a typical adhesive used for uh, oh, planking a foam wing, for instance, with a balsa or plywood. But 3M77 is the only one that works. We've yeah, tried this off. method. And fitting the top lantern in place uh, and making sure that it matches the bottom one. And that's the nice part. If there were pins there and I had a curved lantern, invariably one lantern will spring out from the other because the pin will bend back. When I built my fleet, uh, quarter scale fleet bike, the uh, lantern's were quarter square spruce and they had a, a tremendous curve at the front. And I used this same method, no problem. Now I'm using regular hot stuff in this particular instance to uh, fit the balsa doubler in, or balsa uh, piece in at the trailer at the rear of the fuselage, and I'll be using it all the way through also uh, on my verticals and diagonals because uh, the parts have been pre-cut; they match the bottom parts, and I know that they fit reasonably well. I could use Super T in this particular instance if I wanted to, and if I did that, I would use a drop on the uh, each end of the uh, verticals and diagonals before pressing them in place. You might notice that the uh, spouts look a little different on the hot stuff bottles we're using here. A few months back, we introduced a new applicating system that just allows the modeler to design his own system for application. Uh, we have retained the safety lock insert inside the neck of the bottle and that allows for conventional use of the tubing right into the insert or you can screw the spout on and use it just as a spout for those who like spouts only and in addition to that you can use the spout and the tubing the way we are the way we are here um, all three methods are available with each bottle of hot stuff uh, in all sizes you'll find decals in each package of uh, half ounce and two ounce hot stuff and super tea also and we're rather proud of them they're elliptical in shape and they're beautiful they're red white and blue and they're fuel proof and uh, they're press on. It's no accident that they're elliptical and uh, look quite a bit like that 1300 satellite wing you saw earlier in the tape. The decals, by the way, are mylar too, so if, should you uh, have them on monocoat, they'll shrink right along with the monocoat and stay. Uh, the way they should. They'll stay in place. Well, actually, they're uh, laminated mylar, so they're completely fuel proof. Right. They're clear mylar over the color. Now, that fuselage is going together rather fast, that, half, that second side, as you'll note. You know, uh, some of you may be wondering why, in a, in a tape about hot stuff, we talk so much about 3M77 and and uh, the Lazy Ace, for instance, silicone carbide paper. The reason is that we're modelers, just like you, and, and just like you, when we find something that works very well, we like to pass it on. We've got about 78 years of model experience between us, and all I remember... He's got most of them. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Well, I have enjoyed it. But I remember when I was eight years old and trying to build my first model, and uh, that was too long ago almost to remember, I couldn't get any help anywhere. Nobody would help me. Even the guy across the street that built models wouldn't help me. He didn't like little kids or something. It's terrible. Well, I'm sure glad you started anyway. Yeah, I started. I kept with it, too. And I haven't had a more enjoyable time. I couldn't have had a more enjoyable time. Now, as soon as I finish that fuselage, I can sand it. And I sand the side before I take it off the board because 
That way I won't get any holidays in it uh, when I have the fuselage assembled. I won't have to sand it. It's already done. And after sanding it, I can go back and the balsa dust has filled any slight cracks of, or imperfections that I had when I cut those pieces because I don't cut them that perfect. And the hot stuff and the balsa dust together make a perfect joint. Sand them again right away and it's, it looks like I cut to perfection, but I really don't. Yeah, you can't see the, any gaps anymore once the balsa dust is uh, filled it in and it's, it's automatic just with the sanding. You gonna take that fuselage up now? Yeah, I'm gonna take that, uh, I'm gonna slip <coughs> underneath that uh, wax paper, between the wax paper and the plans with my steel rule and just slide right down below the, bo the uh, bottom fuselage side, separate both sides from the plans at one time. If I had pins in there, I'd still be pushing them in and taking them out, and I wouldn't have that first side done yet. One nice thing about this method, too, you can roll up your plans, and you don't need a rubber band to hold them together after you're finished. But don't worry about them sticking together, because the light tack will just hold them, and, and uh, they won't stick together. You can unroll them and use them again. My wax paper, again, comes off very cleanly. And that's from the first side that was down and the first side that was on the plan. This T-bar stock with the 3M works so nice and it's long enough so I catch it all I do it in a hurry. Sometimes you're different sticks or sheets will be slightly odd sized it might instead of quarter square it might actually be a 30 second larger than that in one direction and a quarter the other way and uh, so that's what that's the, what the sanding is taking care of again filling filling the gaps automatically with uh, the balsa dust and then hot stuffing and sanding right away. <clears throat> I'm going to slide a razor blade in between the uh, two fuselage sides now to separate them at the, tra at the uh, rear end because I have that large balls to piece in there and, and uh, the 3M does have a pretty good tack to it. If it were down for a long period of time, I'd just hit that with a uh, top flight uh, heat gun and heat it up, and it wouldn't hurt the hot stuff, but it would uh, heat up the 3M enough so I could do this same thing, no problem. I could leave it there for six months and do it. The plans come off the same way. If they ever st are sticking too tightly, all you have to do is just hit them with a top flight heat gun. You just heat it up as, as you pull, and it comes right off. And then roll them up and put them away. There's the first side separated. Wax paper comes off cleanly. This is cut right wax paper, by the way. Um, it's the only one we've found uh, down through the years that has enough wax on it to really work well. Don't use a mylar or any vellum or, or anything else between it. It does not work properly. That's it. it. Now for some wing construction. This is the bottom wing of the Lazy Ace. The right panel is, has been built already. We left the left side unassembled so that uh, you could see just how fast a wing can go together. I did put down the lower sheet because this is a detube section on this wing and I, I had just laid them down on the wax paper uh, prior to this assembly and uh, just line them up which only takes a moment I'm fitting in the uh, spar webbing it's uh, vertical grain webbing and uh, this uh, spar webbing is pre-cut, of course, in the kit.
It's fantastic. Yeah, it, I can't believe those shear webs are already already cut and they fit. <clears throat> and as you can see, the, the ribs fit beautifully. It's uh, almost snapped together. Jane cut spar notches par excellence. I'm laying in uh, quarter spruce uh, top spar in the notch uh, in back of that uh, vertical shear web. Pressing them in place right up against the spar. And I'll line up the, very, the uh, ribs in their positions. I have the uh, aileron set up right behind, as you know. And uh, everything is just setting in place. None of it's glued yet. I'll take the regular hot stuff and start at the end and, and uh, bond each rib, each shear web, and the top spar, and the uh, shear web together all at the same time. As fast as I can go, it's bonded. I could go back to the first rib that I just glued, and if I ripped it out, it would shatter completely. Hot stuff is, uh, has a great capillary action, and it wicks right down through, as you noted on the fin that we did prior. Now, if you were putting these, if this uh, wing was designed differently where the bottom spar only was down and you were putting the ribs down on top of it, for instance, uh, Super T would work just fine, putting it on the ribs and at each end and in the spar notch and then down in place. But uh, when the parts fit and are put together previous to uh, bonding, regular hot step is the way to go. The leading edge is in the general area. It's a little hard to see, but it hasn't it hasn't been bonded yet to anything. It's just there in front of the uh, ribs. Yeah, it's three eighths square, <coughs> and I've knocked the bottom off of it uh, of the diamond shaped leading edge so that uh, it'll fit flush against that three thirty second sheet uh, uh, bottom cap. I'm putting the. Uh, three-quarter by uh, quarter rear spar in uh, that uh, at the threat at the uh, rear of the ship rear of the wing and I'm bonding the back of the vertical shear webs to the bottom spar now it only takes a minute just to go back and make sure you got every joint Now this joins directly butt joined it, uh, the uh, three quarter by quarter uh, rear spar uh, trailing edge of the wing ahead of the aileron and it butt joins against those ribs so I'm just uh, putting a drop on each one and its capillary action pulls it right down through. At the same time I'm bonding it to the 332nd sheet. Well, that's in place and completed. I'm ready for the top cap sheeting ahead of that joint. And it fits down in a notch that uh, are cut in the ribs and uh, butts against that three quarter by quarter trailing edge. So I'm using Super T on the ribs because I can't get at them any other way unless I pinhole the boss and drop a uh, regular hot stroke through the pinholes. This makes it easy. The Super T just sits there and waits for me. I'm going to pop the 332nd sheet in place and use regular hot stuff to catch the trailing edge joint. As fast as I can go, it's bonded. Yeah, there's no use uh, 
bothering with the super T going along a very, very thin edge, like 330 seconds, uh, it's much easier just to whip right along it with regular hot stuff, and uh, it's all done. These two ounce bottles of <coughs> hot stuff and super T are very economical, and they have a tremendous shelf life on the bench one year. And in the freezer, should you purchase more than one at a time when you have a special at your hobby shop, uh, take the excess amounts that you uh, have purchased and put them directly into your freezer and leave them there without opening them. You want to make sure, though, when you take them out for use, before you open the bottle, let it come back to room temperature because like any can of pop or of beer out of the refrigerator, it's going to get moisture all over it, condensation. It sweats. And moisture cures hot stuff. So you can see that if the bottle is opened, and especially if you start using it while it's cold, you're going to be sucking moisture constantly into the bottle, and uh, that doesn't do the shelf life any good at all. And even though the freezer extends the shelf life out to approximately two years at a minimum, um, it's best not to use the product when it's cold because it's the same thing as trying to use it uh, in a cold climate where, you, where you're working at temperatures of 40 degrees or 45 degrees. It's very slow uh, well, until, even, until even, it would warm up. Yeah, even at 50, 55 degrees, you'd notice a difference. Between 70 and 55 degrees, there would be a, uh, a difference of a few seconds in the bonding time. Uh, that's why Arm & Hammer baking soda comes in real handy if you're, uh, if you're working in a cold climate because it kicks it on command. You notice that there are 12 ribs in this section and uh, it takes quite a while to, to uh, put the Super T on, on each rib and the spar and so forth. But Super T gives you that time. Uh, it just sits there and waits for the planking, doesn't soak in. It's It's got body and it just stays on top of the ribs until you're ready to go. Well, we designed it intentionally that way because some thick-bodied uh, cyanoacrylates kick off almost before you can get anything down on them. Yeah, they, you can be taken by surprise with a, with a uh, sheet of planking that's uh, cockeyed, for instance, if the, if the adhesive is not positionable. Now I didn't put any super T on the leading edge uh, because it's a diamond shaped leading edge and I'm going to bond that uh, at a 45 degree angle, our, uh, the 332 sheet, and using regular hot stuff as I go along. You can see it going on. The sheet is slightly bowed so I uh, press it in firmly and I'll probably fill that with a little baking soda any uh, area where there's a gap. But this way, I can just leave the sheet sticking up at that 45. You can see it's loose, and it's just, it's already bonded. Now, there's the baking soda. Fill, is, fill in any gap and just put a little more uh, hot stuff on it. Okay, it's ready to go. Now, all, all that's that time, in place. Super T's just been waiting for you. Super T's waiting for me to put it down. I can feel the heat coming through as it bonds. I'm pressing it in place, and it's bonding to every rib top spar, and those vertical shear webs. I should point out that uh, even though Super T does give you plenty of time to, uh, to work, um, that doesn't, doesn't mean you can go to lunch after you've put it on and then come back and put the planking down. It, uh, we're talking about, oh, a minute. If your wife calls you, tell her to wait a minute. <laughs> I usually just pick up a sanding block and hit the joint after, right after I'm through. I'm just in the habit of doing it. Well, it fills that uh, fills in the gap right in with automatically. Oh, sure. Right. I'm going to bevel the uh, three thirty second sheet at the uh, trailing edge of the aileron slightly, and uh, again that long T bar comes in very handy for that purpose. That yeah. gives me a wide blue joint. 
I'm using Super T here again because it's going to be a closed area and I can't see through. When we spoke about shelf life a while ago, we have a large distributor chain and we've chosen our distributors very carefully to be the de best distributors in the world. And by that I mean the ones that take the most care. We could have 600 more. We have 200 of the best. And even so, once in a while, a stock problem might come up whereby fresh goods are put in front of older goods. Uh, if that happens, uh, and you see a bottle of hot stuff that's supposed to be thin, that is thick, at your dealers, tell him about it. Have him send it to us. We'll replace it. That's the reason we've always put hot stuff and super tea in see-through bottles. Uh, we just don't have any desire to fool anybody. We want you to be able to see the quantity and the condition of the material uh, before you buy it. It makes it very simple. You know that uh, hot stuff is the consistency of water, and uh, you can see it right through the bottle. Now, as we uh, showed you before, we're going to remove this wing from the bench, like we did with the fuselage and the uh, fin, using a steel rule between the wax paper and the plans. And isn't it nice not to pull any pins? Now, this wing is built in two halves because it has two and a half inches of dihedral in each tip. So they're separated in the center, actually. And I won't take the other one off the bench at this time. Comes away free and easy. I probably spotted a little bit of hot stuff there directly in the center. Off comes the wax paper. And there's completed aileron, except for the front cap. Another nice feature about using a, with using a 3M uh, and the wax paper without pins is that if uh, by chance you work on a pressed board uh, building bench, uh, the pins don't make little dips in your structure. All done. This is the OS twin Gemini. Gemini. It's a 120. And that's what's going to go on the front of this Lazy Ace. Beautiful engine. People have asked us if uh, Hot Stuff and Super T are strong enough for firewalls. Well, again, those of you who build with hot stuff know the answer. And those of you who saw the demonstration yeah, I guess you know already know too. the answer. Yeah. The uh, firewall is going on here with Super T. Line it up, fit it in place, and press in. Just a firm finger pressure. That's it. Now, uh, we're going to be putting some angled stock in the back, which is a good idea no matter what you use to put your firewall on with. Uh, a little extra balsa doesn't hurt a bit. Structural strength is important in uh, with any type of adhesive, and uh, we've always believed in making sure that the strength that's needed is there for our models. So this triangular stock fills that particular little gap or space in between the uh, uh, fuselage side and the firewall. And it does it in a much lighter way than you can possibly do it with giant gobs of glue. It's a good idea to also put one in front of the firewall when you have a uh, cowling set up. Uh, and this one, this particular ship does, and it will have that. 
makes a good uh, area for your fuel proofing. Uh, you can see the uh, fillet there that's formed at the uh, edge of the joint. Now that's bonded well enough that it, uh, those pieces could be immediately cut off. In fact, if you tried to rip them out, you'd rip balsa right now. I wanted to use the uh, firewall as a guide when I cut that. And that's it. Now here's one area, pardon? Go ahead. Uh, uh, here's one area that uh, is very important too. Uh, when a, when uh, one puts in verticals and diagonals, they're all butt joints. And uh, butt joints are really the, pits. Uh, the, the weakest part. Is it strong? Sure, remember the plywood. But, again, Butt joints are the weakest part of any construction. So as you'll note, the small diagonal bracing of balsa, very, very light diagonal with the grain running. The uh, applicator system that we talked about a little while ago with the regular insert in the tubing, the spout only, or the spout in the tubing. Whichever way you like it. You can dispense it three ways. It's like a little speedometer going across there. <clears throat> now our Teflon tubing that we use for applicators has a tolerance of plus or minus about three thousands and so do the inserts that we use and uh, of course once in a while the tolerances are exactly opposite each other and so the fit might be a little tight so we use a toothpick in the hole of the insert a regular round toothpick to open up that hole it's no problem shove it in pull it out yeah for super t a round toothpick is exactly the right size for the tubing don't Perhaps push it in quite so far for regular hot stuff And there's a traditional applicator. One inch of tubing or less, no three inches. Save the excess. We always give you more than enough. You just put it out, pull it out, and uh, put it in a bag or in a margarine container or something. Just keep it handy. Now here we're using a spout only. That's the way you can use it uh, if you want to just use a spout, right, Bill? Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to use the tubing and the spout, again, use the round toothpick in the spout, which already has a hole in it in a two-ounce size. Slip in the tubing, and you have your third way. Pure nitro. You can't beat it for getting super tea and hot stuff off your hands, out of your clothes, and so forth. And now it's available as a new product through the distributor chain from Golden West Fuels in Sherman Oaks, California. Some people worry a lot about getting stuck together with hot stuff and super tea. Well, I'm going to purposely stick myself together here and slight finger pressure and make sure I'm well stuck. Now, to get apart, a slight peeling pressure does it real well. You don't see any blood or anything. It's no big deal. But to get that hot stuff off your hands, it's always been kind of a problem until now. We've always recommended pure nitro in our tip booklets, but getting it has been a problem. And now, Ultra Super Solvent from Golden West Fuels comes in two ounce bottles with a spout applicator, and it works fine. All the hot stuff is gone. Ask your hobby shop to get Ultra Super Solvent from his distributor made by Golden West Fuels. Fiberglass and hot stuff. This is a method that many modelers may not have tried yet, but it's 
it's so easy and fast. It makes life awfully easy when a person is using fiberglass. In this case, I'm using KMB six ounce fiberglass cloth. Those of you those of you who have used six ounce cloth know that it's very thick and uh, very strong. Now that's the original. Uh, that's the top wing. Uh, for the Lazy Ace, which was completed before, and it's already got the fiberglass cloth on it. We're going to uh, do the bottom of the top wing now. And I've cut a piece of six ounce fiberglass cloth, checking it out to see if it matches up with the top side. If you've got a stopwatch on your wristwatch, you might like to time this. It'll surprise you. This is the fastest fiberglassing you may have ever seen. Now, when I when I put the hot stuff on the glass, it penetrates around every fiber of the glass, as opposed to using resins and so forth, which one might have to squeegee in, and you get holes and holidays and bubbles, and it slips and runs around. I'm putting it on each corner, laying a baggie on top of it as I do it, just, just to uh, cure it quickly. It penetrates through immediately. One nice thing that you'll notice immediately when you finish putting fiberglass cloth on with hot stuff is that when you sand it, you won't itch. Because, as Bob mentioned, the hot stuff penetrates completely through the fibers, surrounds every fiber. So you have no glass fiber dust. As you'll note, I'm going all around the outside of the glass, so I don't get any wrinkles or any possibility of any wrinkles. Well, it wouldn't matter if you got a wrinkle anyway. Well, I could cut it and I bond it down, and it would go down perfectly. But uh, who wants to cut it? And why want? Who wants to mess around with it? So well, every so often you're going to get a wrinkle, but with hot stuff, uh, if you got a wrinkle or a bubble for some reason, all you have to do is when the area is complete, sand it right out smooth, you can sand right through the fiberglass cloth and it won't fray, and uh, just replace it with another piece of hot, with another piece of glass. Notice the penetration, clear through the glass, and that's the plywood spar you see. I'm, I'm just spreading hot stuff on as I go, in a line, and I've held the wing up at a 45 degree angle so that it's penetrating through and running inside and along. Mm -hmm all of that six ounce cloth and it doesn't take as much as you might think when you hold when you hold it at the at an angle and let it run it goes everywhere it needs to be instead of just sitting in puddles that way you use the least amount and least is always best with hot stuff we're not we're not trying to get you to use most we want you to use the least you can use for a particular bond I'm using a little bit of baking soda on the top of this hot stuff that's been put on there because what's on the outside of the glass is not cured yet. That that has gone through it and bonded to the boss is totally cured. This fills it at the same time, and as you'll note, I didn't stick to it because it's totally cured now. You uh, want to make sure that you always use adequate ventilation, especially with this method, because although the the curing fumes only last for a few minutes. Uh, they're uncomfortable. They're non-toxic, but they're uncomfortable, like cigarette smoke right under your nose, for instance. Those with a lung condition uh, would find it very uncomfortable, and so they should use a fan to blow away the fumes, for sure. Again, the fumes only last for a few minutes. It's not like uh, polyester resin, for instance, where the fumes last for hours and hours and just fill up your whole house. And since hot stuff is totally non-toxic and only lacrimous, and lacrimous uh, tear producing, uh, makes it a very easy product to use. Lots of uh, modeling chemicals are extremely dangerous. And we're proud to say that hot stuff isn't one of those. You should keep it out of, out of the reach of small children, of course, just like any any modeling tool or chemical, but uh, again, it is non-toxic. 
The baggie is used for quick curing. You can feel the heat come through the bag, uh, a warmth. It's not, uh, it's not a heat that would burn you. But when you feel that heat, it's cured. And right. now, just to cure the top layer and just to finalize it, a little baking soda. As you notice, I went around that edge with no problem, and it's bonded. And I'll take the sanding block to it now, and you'll see the, the uh, uh, phrase go away. And the edge line is clean because it's totally bonded to the surface. And you've never seen a faster fiberglassing job in your life. The possibilities for use of this type of method are unlimited. Sure, wingtips, uh, total fuselages over polyurethane foam. Don't use it over over the white foam. Hot stuff goes right through it. Yeah, eats that white foam right up. It loves that stuff. Goes through it like crazy. But polyurethane foam works beautiful on you. Can do a monocoque fuselage and nothing flat, and then melt out the polyurethane foam. And don't breathe those fumes. And you'd end up with a shell, a monocoque shell complete in a matter of a uh, time that you've never dreamed of. Now you could glass a, uh, a white foam wing for instance with hot stuff uh, as long as it's been planked first or covered with uh, well, tissue for instance and uh, coated with aliphatic resin uh, thin 50 percent with water uh, coat it a couple of times let it dry and you can go ahead and glass right over it as long as the hot stuff can't get to the foam itself. Unless it's polyurethane foam again. And if that's the case and you're sheeting a polyurethane foam wing, put the Super T itself on uh, the balsa sheet. Then press the balsa sheet on, a poly, on the uh, polyurethane foam wing and you've got a sheeted wing that no matter what kind of heat you run into as in your car trunk for instance, it will never come loose. Stick wood. Laminating stick wood for a curved leading edge, for instance, or uh, fuselage uh, laundrin, for instance, that might be uh, might have a belly on it. This is a, an incredibly easy way to do it. The uh, piece of graph paper has been put down with 3, 3M77, more 77 on top of that than the wax paper, more 77 on top of the wax paper. And then the, uh, the strip wood goes right down on top of it. I've drawn the straightest line I can draw off freehand there. It's kind of curvy, but uh, it'll suit our purpose as well. We're using regular hot stuff because, again, it goes right down through the joints. We're using a 16th by 3 8 balsa here. And we're just going to make a real curvy piece. This uh, is very similar to the way skis are made in that several laminations are used. The uh, parts, the pieces individually are fragile, but uh, when they're put together like this, uh, it makes an incredibly strong unit. Another nice thing about using hot stuff for laminated strips like this is that since the hot stuff cures immediately, once you pull the unit up, it retains its shape. Uh, I'm sure many of you have uh, used this method with uh, or used laminated leading and trailing edges by uh, soaking them and bending them around to 365 pins. And then as soon as you take the pins out, the uh, lamination springs into some other position than you'd like it. But this isn't the case with hot stuff. The, uh, as you'll see in a moment, the laminated pieces stay in exactly the same position in which they were glued. See the black line? See the fit? And that's it. Cyanoacrylate glues are not all the same. There are over a hundred different formulas. 
Our hot stuff and super tea formulas are the highest quality, so you'll know you'll always be able to trust our products. Check our magazine ads. You'll see world champions such as Hanno Predner, Wolfgang Matt, Les McDonald, Bob Hunt, as well as well-known modelers and columnists like Dick Phillips, Big is Beautiful, Don Godfrey, Giant Steps, Chuck Cunningham, Cunningham on RC, and Ken Willard, The Sunday Flyer, all telling about their uses of hot stuff and super tea. Our main interest, though, is that all modelers use hot stuff and super tea to their best advantage. That's our reason for making this tape, and we hope you've enjoyed these demonstrations of hot stuff and super tea's strength, speed, and versatility.